this is what he wanted. I said, oh, my. I said, oh, my, Sister Candy. I Copy said, oh, that. my. I said, Lord, that's going to be tough. It's going to be tough, Lord. And then the next words I said to my, to, to my Lord and my Savior is, eh, you're not going to want to hear this. People are not going to want to hear this message. <laughs> I said it to him just like that. And then he said, I'll be with you. <laughs> I said, it ain't oh. what it's, and sometimes I it's hard to hear, like Jack from FS High School, you know, some of us might not want to hear, but evidently God's telling him we need to you need to hear it. So, might sometimes it might be difficult to hear and understand, but that's where we should do prayer and you know and what we get out of the just listen to what the Lord wants us to hear, not what we want to hear. I will agree. Exodus chapter five, verse one. We'll pray in. See what the Lord has in store for us for tonight. This Good afternoon. Wednesday Hello. night Bible study. Open mic. And of course, this is just to generate a conversation between you and God. For the dialogue to open and for the Lord to instruct. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you for all things. Thank you for allowing us this opportunity to, to come before you. We stand at your feet, God, in humble submission unto you. To know that you are the author and finisher of our faith. And that you are our Lord and you are our shepherd, you are our king. We thank you for that. There's no God like unto you, God. You are the great I am. Speak tonight, Father, only you can and will. Direct us, lead us, and guide us. Bless those that are absent, God. Keep them covered up under the shadow of the Almighty God. This is our prayer tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I know last, a couple of weeks ago, because we didn't have it last week, but a couple of weeks ago we were talking about uh, long hair and we're kind of looking at the man at the present, really not really looking at the woman right now at the present. I think what we're going, what we're going to do is, um, before we move down to another part of the body, we're going to do both male and female. So as we go down, we don't have to go back up and start over. Amen? That's kind of what God was putting in my heart as I was kind of reading and studying this. So we're looking at the male. We understand that uh, we didn't go really into a whole lot of depth. We can stay. We can stay there for days and days and days, and years and years, just with the fact of that. Again, this is just a conversation between you and your God. Amen. Don't don't shoot the messenger. Don't don't shoot the messenger. Whatever you do, but there's there's a lot of scriptures that's out there that that God has instructed man on what he should do concerning his hair and what God considers to be holiness. Um, there's a lot more, like I said, concerning the scriptures, um, concerning long hair, but I'm going to let you do some digging and discovering on your own about that within your prayer time, talking to the male, within your prayer time about the Lord. Now, me personally, I know now that I, I was trying to remember. I know I've, at one point I've had an afro. I think I've had some. I think I, I, I didn't get, I, I got twist. I remember doing that, but I don't remember um, having long, long hair down past my neck or either my ears. I don't remember that. But I know my hair used to be an afro type didn't cut it for a while, for a long time, and that I did twist it up, amen. Mm -hmm. But what I know now, based on my walk with the Lord now, everything that we do has a meaning, is a cause, and there's an effect. I know that, and I'll stand behind that. There's more going on in the spiritual realm than what's going on in the natural realm on the things that we do and how they affect us. Now, 
and that's a whole nother that's a whole nother uh, um, grace as well, right? For God to really, and I don't know it all. I don't pretend to know it all, but I do know what I know. How, again, the things that we do impact us, and it could be in a negative way or a positive way, concerning our here. Um, now, for me, just kind of recap and not going back. Me, I don't like the style for me, for as in having uh, braids or dreadlocks, and long hair down to wherever. That's not my style. Amen. That's not something that I desire to do. I don't like that look. So, like I said, I don't remember even entertaining those. Now, am I saying that if you have those, you're not holy? Right. That's not what I'm saying. Amen. What I'm simply saying is that's between you and the Lord. Amen. And what you do with that, based on what God has shared with you, then that's your walk with the Lord. Amen. Amen. We just looking at it, looking at it from God's perspective and our own perspective, because we know that there's a lot of trends. There's a lot of things going on out there in the world that believers have adapted to and that are doing. And not really understanding why they do what they do or where they originated from. Thank you, Father. Right? Where they come from. So it's good to know. Right? It's just good to know when you do whatever it is that you are doing to make sure that you are in God's will. Amen? And again, I mean, I at this one page, I got this. I don't know how many is. You know, if you want some personally, just text me and I'll give you some other, other ones that's in the word of God pertaining to long hair. So tonight we're just going to look at the man's hair and the question is, can a man or should a man cut his hair? Is it permissible for a man to cut his hair. Now we we know the one of the strongest Bible stories in the Word of God. We can all go to Samson. Mm -hmm. That's one of the strongest ones that we know. That actually God had gave a command to Samson's mother that he should not cut yeah. his hair. Yeah. Absolutely. So we know that. But let's just outside of Sans Samson. Is it permissible? Now, me personally, of course, you see my hair. My hair is short. It's been short for a while, right? I like wearing my hair like this. I don't like a lot of hair on my head. Mm -hmm. Did God tell me to cut my hair? No, he did not. <laughs> did God tell me that I couldn't cut my hair? No, he did not. Amen. Just looking at the fact of, uh, and again, I think we looked at the point of anything that that we alter, anything that we change, right, from the way or the, st not necessarily style. I can't say, I can't use the word style because that means, that means so much. Um, the way that God created. I think that's where the, the, trouble lies with the believer, right? Or it could lies with the believer when we begin to alter, you know, what God had given us. Amen. So let's go to Ezekiel chapter 5, verse number 1, and see what the Lord says. Now, we understand that these are instructions based on the word of God through Ezekiel. And it says, And thou, son of man, take thee a sharp knife, Take thee a barber's razor and cause it to pass upon the head and upon thy beard. Then take the balance to weigh and divide the hair. Now, now this is something in, in this passage, God is actually telling the prophet, uh, giving him a command on what he wants him to do based on what the Lord is going to do. Amen. Now, we just want to look at what was said. Not what was done with the hair. Can we just look at it there mm -hmm. for the sake of just a little of a, a discussion? Not an argument, a discussion, right? Now, 
what thoughts would come to your mind? I know you didn't have a chance to go and read it because I didn't put out what we was really going to discuss and talk about. But what thoughts come to your mind based upon what the Holy Ghost is sharing with you when you read that? It says, And thou, son of man, take thee a sharp knife, take thee a barber's razor, and cause it to pass upon thy head. What, what thoughts come to your mind when God said that? What, what is he doing? What, what, is, uh, what is the man of God doing? He's cutting his hair. Yes, he's cutting his hair. God is telling the prophet to cut his hair. And we're not going to read the, the second verse and the third verse because those are instructions what God had commanded him to do. But just let's dig in that a little bit and tell me your thoughts about that what Ezekiel is saying in 5 and 1, what comes to your mind. Now, you know, if you really think about it, if you go to uh, any kind of festival or any kind of function where there's a lot of people that's gathered, you're going to see some hairstyles that you probably didn't know that was out there. Am I right about it? So, I mean, just with, with that, I mean, you know, what's your thought? How do you feel about that? Is it okay for, for me as a believer, as a, as a man of God, to really just do with my hair whatever I want? Is it okay? Or should it be okay? Or is it not okay? Is my hair? Or is it my hair? That's the question. So get your motors running a little bit as we're thinking about that. It is your hair, but it's given to you by God. It is my hair, but it's given to me by God. Okay, so should I have the right to to? And this is just this is and this is this is I think it will open up our our, our knowledge of understanding a little bit. Sister Candace said, it "Is my hair, but it's given to me by God." So here's part B to that question. Part A was, "Can I do what I want to do with it?" Right. Part B is, go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay, so can I do with it what I want to? Or should I want to please God with whatever I do? Part B to the question. question. You should always want to please God with everything. You should always want to please God? Even just with a simple hairstyle? Said yes? Okay. So let me ask you this, because in this, in, in it, what is, there's several reasons what would warrant someone shaving their head. Give me a name of a prophet. Do you remember a prophet that was bald-headed? Do you remember one that didn't have any hair on his head? <coughs> he was a he was he was a mentor to a prophet by the name of Elisha. Elisha, remember? He didn't have any hair on his head. And actually, one of the first three miracles that he performed once Elijah was caught up and was transfigured to the Lord was he was picked on by some young people about his head being bald. Of course, the end of their story was they was mauled. They was he cursed them, and they all lost their lives behind ridiculing and picking at the prophet that didn't have any hair. And you remember his name? Elisha. Elisha. Mm -hmm. It was Elisha. Mm -hmm. One of the first miracles that he performed was when Elijah was going home to be with the Lord, and he asked him for a double portion of his anointing. And then Elisha said, if the Lord allow you to see me go up, then well, first he said, you asked a hard thing. And he said, if the Lord allow you to see me go up, then the Lord will grant you that. And, of course, he saw him go up. Now, this was Elisha. And, and, of course, he parted the Jordan going over. Elisha did. And Elisha parted it coming back. That was his first miracle as, <laughs> as a prophet, as a man of God. So it's, it's important to really think about it. In all that we do, we should want to honor God in all that we do. 
I don't think it should just be certain things that we do when it comes to honoring God. So in one case, right, shaving your head is a sign of mourning. That's, that's one case. When, when you see someone maybe have shaved their head, right, that's a sign of mourning. Now, I know he got in sackcloth and ashes. That's that's good. Let's see, can we find that? I think he did, but I'm not. The Holy Spirit is not really bringing that back, bringing that back. And one thing that I have just kind of noticed the last Bible study we went over the fact that how God instructs us. I don't know what scripture that was. Can y'all hear me? Instructed them not to cut hair yes. before. That was not to. Yes. But what? why did God say that? Do we remember why God instructed him? What was what was uh, a, a key indication of me not shaving my head? Do we remember? No, when I don't. We, when we set ourselves apart unto the Lord. And remember, the Lord didn't have no time frame that that would be. Like you do it for four months or you do it for three weeks. And it did, if you wanted to set yourself aside, apart, for the use of the Lord, then you did it. And that's Almost. why some religions do that, even now. That's one of their outward. Did they set themselves apart by doing that? Like I think the monks and stuff, the, and, and they don't shave or whatever. I didn't know that. Okay. Well, the Buddhists, the people that I think they do shave, um, and because it represents the like eternal truth of, you know, with cleansing and going through their but they shave. They just let it grow. They just let it grow. Yeah. And that's the outward sign. Yeah. But here, this is saying to shave. Well, yeah, because we was looking at the, just the male. It what was it? I don't know if you heard us on Zoom. Was it was it permissible? Is it lawful for me to cut my hair? That was the question. Well, in my mind, when we looked at that scripture last week, the, a couple of weeks ago, and then we look at this one, and this one is uh, what God is telling him to do. Yes. So what it's it says to me is we can we can walk in a way and have a relationship in a way that there may come a time that mm -hmm. God says. Don't shave. And then you'll clearly hear his voice and say, cut your hair. Mm -hmm. I agree. Right? Absolutely. And so I think like. One of the one of the things that for me is if I stay in connection with God. He will lead and guide me all the way down to the follicles of my hair. Okay, now we're looking at the male, not the female I yet. I understand. Okay. 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 Maybe no batteries. Okay, so Brother James is, uh, we're trying to get this mic live, and Brother James was talking about. Um, check, check, check. Okay. So what I was saying is that a lot of this takes into account different covenants that one has with God or curses that God has placed on people, and I brought up Samson. He was a Nazarene. That meant that he could not cut his hair because the Nazarene people were cursed by God to not cut their hair. 
It was a symbol of their power, which is what Samson's was, you know? It was a symbol of his power, which is why when he was, you know, got tired and said, you know, to Delilah, it's, it's my hair. That's where my power comes from. As soon as his hair was cut, he lost all of his power because that was his covenant with God. Um, specifically in Ezekiel, Ezekiel has been praying to God, sitting there saying, listen, we're under a lot of duress. We're under a lot of strain. We're under a lot of stress because we have uh, the armies sitting there looking down on us from the hills just waiting for any chance to do anything, and we need your help. Mm -hmm. And this is why God in prayer. Mm -hmm. and this is why God came to him and said, listen, you're a priest. Cut all your hair off because this is going to show the people you're going to have a hard time struggling. You're going to have a hard time for the next couple of of years for the next few, you know, for the next decade, but it's going to get better. And wasn't it significant that the priest had long hair? Yes. Is why he, he S in the case the of Judaism priests, the long hair was also a sign of a covenant with you know their their purity with God. But Eze was Ezekiel Ezekiel was a, a, a prophet of God. He wasn't a Levite. Right, but he was Levi. still he still was a priest. He was a, a a prophet and a priest. Yes, but not like not like the Levites that came through the lineage of the priests. Right. right. Yes. Right. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. So, Job one and twenty. Then Job arose and went and rent his mantle, and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground in worship. Now, we remember what was going on in Job's life, mm -hmm. right? Remember what we said, that shaven head is a sign or a symbol of the end mourning, right? right? We know that Job had lost everything that he had, his children, and Job didn't know what to do other than to worship God, and that's just a symbol of that. So, again, now we're just looking at the fact of it is, now what, what, and y'all, both of y'all, Sister Cooper and Brother James said some good things about, about uh, what the Lord is saying. I think we looked at Ezekiel 5 and 1 and said that God specifically told Ezekiel to do this, right? The covenant, James used the word covenant, right? That's an agreement between an individual and God, right? right? God had said something that he's going to do, he's going to provide, or he's going to bring it to pass. And we have a part to play in the covenant that God has spoken, right? Don't just go one way, it goes both ways. Even though the Lord is going to bring it to pass, we still must do what the Lord has said to do. And it goes on to the point about just the holiness part of it. So what's your thoughts? Give me your thoughts about you're at this, you're at this big function, you're out, you're at the county fair and just you see all kind of hairstyles and 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 I'm telling you that I mean I got whatever I mean just for as your imagination can run and I'm telling you that the Lord has told me to do that right what are some of the key ways as a believer I'm talking about as a believer not a non-believer right what are some of the key ways we know that God is speaking. Well, if a person said to me, mm -hmm. God told me to do it? Yeah. I'm going to say, amen, because that's not for me to judge whether or not what God told them what to do and that's their personal relationship now my mm -hmm. next prayer would be like God be with them continue to lead and guide them show them even the more your will and your way you if it's very far fetched okay you got a lot of impressionable people that's looking at that particular style and well, they don't have that relationship that you have with the Lord well, and, so, and we have to be careful because as, as believers, one of the things we have to do 
is be careful because everything we do is our witness of God. They're going to look at us, and they're going to say, oh, that's what God do? Oh, that's God? Oh, God cussed them out like that? I don't think that's Jesus. So in all that we do, if they came and they had purple hair, and they said they, they colored their hair purple for um, Lent, and then they're going to color it back their natural color after Lynn is over. And that's what the Lord told them to do. I'm not, I, this is me personally. I'm not one to judge a person that says the Lord told them to do that. Because I'm not hearing God speak for you. I hear God speak for me. And I pray that they are right. Because I know the power of influence. Okay, and that was, that's, that's, that's my question. That's my question. It's not the point of you as a believer going to condemn or chastise or correct someone based on their choice of hairstyle or my choice of hairstyle. I'm not talking about man. I'm looking at man, right? Because I think the, uh, the, the original lesson start with the fact of it's, it's mine. The Lord had given it to me. But in essence, I should want to please God with not only what comes out of my mouth, but the way that I look. Most definitely. Okay. Okay. But so I understand what you're saying. And I'm in agreement to the point of there's, there's only one judge and that's Jesus Christ that's God Almighty Mm -hmm. I'm in agreement with that but I'm talking about the impressionable side of the things that we see in the natural how they affect other people we know people kind of gravitate to styles they just kind of go with the fad some people do not all some people do but the fact of people not knowing why they have decided to do that. Well, how do we how do we educate? How do we educate? How do we tell? How do we share what's true? Thank you, Father. What's truth and what's not true? You live it. You live it. When I think back. Growing up, that in my eyes they was holy, and they walked with the Lord. Mm-hmm. They had a look. They had a talk. They had a walk. They exemplified Jesus. Okay. Some was extreme. Some was not. Why would you say that? So you extreme that you stuff you can do, stuff you couldn't well, do. Extreme, like um, there was one family. They only wear dresses. They don't particularly cut their hair. Um, I can't. I don't know or not whether they dye it, but I know they don't too much cut their hair. They dress very modest. Right. And they would go to church, and they would they would have church, and they to me it it looked holy, but yet you have someone else, like I look at Aunt Katie, and I don't remember what Aunt Katie did with her hair younger. I think it was always tied up. I don't know. I can't remember if Aunt Katie wore pants, but the way Aunt Katie loved on us took care of people and did things I s- and I would see her read her Bible and pray it exemplified holiness right it didn't it wasn't two different lives and even myself there was a time that I lived two different lives 
I went to church and I did some things, but then I did some things that wasn't holy. And like, it all depends on whose eyes I was in, that I was either right or wrong. And it had, and, and so I think the most we can do to encourage people or to tell people is to live the walk. Because not always is cha, 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 cha going to save them. I think pointing a finger and, and always saying you're right or you're wrong or you're good or you're bad, sometimes you can love a person into righteousness. You can show them love, and then they'll look at you, and they'll deem that as righteousness. And then you'll see people, when they cuss, they say, excuse me, excuse me, I'm sorry, excuse me. You, you, you haven't done anything but live a life in front of them that they know mm-hmm. that their cursing is wrong. Mm-hmm. Right, and that, mm-hmm. you don't, that you cannot do it around them. Right, and not to do it around you. So I think the most we can do is to live a life before them. Teach them how to do it. Even when they come with a, and we're still on the hair, short dress. You don't have to, there's a way God can lead you, you in a way of correction. Why you going to dress? I'm just talking. I'm going to be quiet. <laughs> but I, I feel like <coughs> when we get out there with them mm-hmm. and identify with them mm-hmm. and let them see our life, our light is going to overcast the darkness in their life. Okay. And so then they'll want to be like us as well. Okay. All right. I, I'm, not, I'm not disputing that. Sister Candy, you got anything? I just think that um, if we're looking at the men of God and if we're looking at like a pastor, I personally, and I guess this is probably judgmental, I would not want to see a pastor with purple hair. Maybe it's how I was raised. I don't, you know, I believe there is a way to uphold um, what they, you know, they would definitely have to be led by God what they do, but, you know, I wouldn't care. I would still love you if you come in here with dreads. It would make no difference to me. I'm not opposed to dreads. I'm not opposed to an afro. My husband had one and Jake had one, you know, but the thing about it is I think there is a certain way for a man because he's head of the house, he's head of the if he's head of the church, um, maybe should present himself differently. As far as you definitely would not want to come in, in my opinion, maybe with a hairstyle that was I don't know and a far lot of out. It is maturity, yeah, a lot of it is maturity. Like when I was young and in my twenties, and I used the example, I colored my hair shot red. It was hot, right? At my age, and I'm not far from 20, but at my age now, I wouldn't color my hair no red because I know better. Right. Well, if there's a movie out. It's a Christian movie right now where the lady adopts a son, her and her husband. Anyway, he drowns, and he's underwater for like 15 minutes. I don't know the name of it. I watched it the other day, and they have a new pastor in their church that came in. He was a young pastor, okay, and he had this spiked-up hair and the top and all this, the new style that everybody's doing. She did not like this pastor. I mean, it came to so where he was at the church or come to the hospital and would not leave her side in this and that. And she was like this. She goes, I still don't like your hair. You know, so I do believe we're set in a position that, again, it is judgmental in, uh, in a fact. But I do believe a man, um, if the head of the church, there should be a way that he presents himself wholly through his, the way his hair is done. So it can't be something, I don't know. I don't know, maybe I'm speaking out of the, I, you know, I wouldn't love you any less if your hair was funky. <laughs> I just, you know, uh, there is a way I believe that would be, and again, it's something you have to, I, I'm sitting here thinking I've never prayed to God about what I should do to my hair, you know. So maybe this is why we're doing this, to realize that our, in order to be closer, you know, we got to ask God, what we don't, you know, is God going to tell you to put dread? If he does, we're going to love you. Think, let's think about it. Zoom family, who we got on, Jake? Y'all can chime in at any time. Anytime. Uh, Zoom uh, family. We're looking at the man's hair. We're looking at the man's hair. Mm-hmm. The role of the man. Now we know. Um, 
I would just say that I agree with both um, Sister Candy and Sister Gwen. In other words, we shouldn't be judgmental, but then at the same time, we need to live a life that is pleasing to God. And if we do that, we'll, we'll draw them because um, we don't know, as it was said, we don't know if God told them to dye their hair purple, gray, right. blue, or whatever. But then at the same time, who are we to judge? Mm -hmm. But um, when you read in the word, as the young man was saying, um, Samson when, uh, was told not to cut his hair. But then when you read um, Leviticus in the 14th chapter, um, they had to cut their hair when they had leopards. So at that time, it was used for cleansing. And then when you, you read... We read a little further in Ezekiel, the 44th chapter, in the 20th verse, it tells you, neither shall thou shave thy head, nor suffer thy locks to grow um, grow long. So it's like, should I or should, should I not? So in essence, what I'm trying to say is we're not going to, uh, we shouldn't judge. We're going to let God be their judge right. um, right. to let them know whether it's right or wrong. But then at the same time, as y'all were saying, um, we still got to do what is pleasing to God and we don't Amen. want to offend no one. So if we, what we're doing, if it's offensive to someone, then we got to give an account of that. Because if we're up there in the pulpit with purple hair and someone is offended of that, then we need to look at that. We need to look at that color hair or how, how, even how we're dressed how we're wearing our hair, if it's being offensive, if it's going to hinder someone to come. Right. To come. Good, right. Word. Good word. Good, Good word. Point. What's that scripture? Because it's a scripture that says if it hinders, you cut it off, Miss Sheffield or Aunt Wanda. What, what now? Give us, give us that Ezekiel scripture first before you get, get that question. Oh, don't answer what me. was that last one, Ezekiel? For, 44 and 20. 44 and 20. Good word. Now, what was that question, oh, Sister Gould? Oh. If, if It's better for you to enter in without the hand into the kingdom of God without the hand. Yeah, if mm -hmm. your right hand mm -hmm. causes you to stumble, yes. cut it off yes. and throw it away. Yeah. Yes. It is better for you to lose one part of your body yes. than for your whole body to go to right. hell. Yes. Right. And that's right. um Matthew five and thirty. Um mm -hmm. different um so the thing is as we walk with christ we have to think as if i was a newborn babe i'm gonna say like with that red hair and the people stopping me at the red light oh this is a problem this is not only a problem can cause problems for me but it's causing other people problems. We, we already said it cause and effect. We already talked so about that. So then Spirit. we need to go ahead and go back to faith mm -hmm. and let faith get this red mm -hmm. toned down a lot bit, mm -hmm. not a little bit. So, but at the time, I didn't pray before I did it. Mm -hmm. But then God showed me the cause and effect, and I fixed it. You know what I mean? So I think that if we... I'm not here to tell anyone if God spoke. If you're, if you feel like you're led to do that, then do it. But then, if you you see that it's it's causing you and other people to stumble, so it goes back to say, how do we know? But see, you y'all y'all answering the question without answering the question. Y'all using the word judging, and I hear you using that. But is that is are you is that considered judging? Are you condemning someone? Are you saying, hey, Walter, if you don't get that right? You going to hell for that? Is is that the same? Because if the Holy Spirit, if God the Father, is is putting it in your heart to share with them the truth about what He considers to be holy, what His laws, His precepts, His statutes are all about, because that's the only thing that 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 is going to suffice us. So, 
the truth. If God has put, if God has placed it in your heart, if God is talking to you, you know that it is God and not you that's talking to yourself. Then you do what God tells you to do. Amen. And when you do what God tells you to do, He will give you the words to say. He will give you the spirit of to, how to say to it. it with Amen. You. Because Amen. like He said, a soft voice. A soft voice turns away wrath. Right. So therefore, he's going to give you the spirit, the word, and therefore it will be received by that person. Amen. Now, I'm not I, sure. I agree with Miss Sheffield. Um, I feel like the way you say things can totally, totally drastically change a person's opinion about what you're saying. Right. Um, if you're coming from, like, I don't think it's judging. If you're coming from a place where hey, the Lord put this on my heart to share with you um, about his word. And, and it ain't always have to be necessarily your hair is this, but you can just share the scripture. Um, what we just read, the Bible says this about this, not necessarily pointing you doing this. And so I think the Lord telling me it's wrong, but just showing them what the word does say, not necessarily pointing out they're wrong, but showing them the right. And allowing God to water that seed that you planted um, for them to make a better decision. Because with better knowledge, you have better decisions. So right. sometimes it's not always necessarily correcting their wrong, but it might just be showing them what's right or teaching them what's right. Mm -hmm. And in that way, you can avoid the judging part, you know, feeling like you're judging or telling somebody what they should or shouldn't be doing because you don't know what the Lord has leading. But if we're just sharing God's word, that's our purpose. That, Amen. That's our job. Amen. So we're not doing nothing wrong if we're just sharing the word. Amen. Um, but Amen. when we when we go to you're wrong, this wrong, this wrong, then that may be, yeah, you can look at that as judgment. Amen. Right. Good word. So that's, that, that will keep us as a believer in right standards with the Lord, mm -hmm. right? With loving and kindness have I drawn thee? Right. So if the truth, if you're sharing the truth, and that's all that you're sharing, right, and you're giving it out of love and from your heart, then the rest of it is not up to you, right? Mm -hmm. It's up to the Lord. Good word, good word. So, of course, I think we've already dug into some of the reasons what will Another reason that would be permissible for a man to shave his head, and of course it would be leprosy, mm -hmm. right? And of course we know that, that the Levite, the priest, would have to deem that you are clean or unclean, and at that particular time you are set aside that you would have to wait until you're pronounced clean before you can get back in right standards with the community. Amen? So now when I say that, now I'm not, not talking about just literally going to the barber and you getting a one all over. That's not what I'm talking about when I say cut. I know I just use the word cut. I'm talking about just kind of fashions, trends, uh, signs, you know, patterns. Those things mean, th mean something, right? Those things open up spiritual doors, right? If, they, if, if, if we're not careful, that could cause more harm than good, right? Because we know that, that the enemy, he uses objects, he uses anything, you name it, he can use it, right? right? To turn it, and that's, he's a counterfeiter. He wants to take what God has given us, right? And he wants us to degrade it in a way that God is not pleased. Let's let the truth be told. Right. That's, what it, that's what he wants to do. So just, if, if, if man and brother, if you're going to get a haircut, right, and, and you're getting certain things put into your hair, right, all I would say is that I know the fruit, right? You're going to bear good fruit through the fruit of the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's all I would say. Yes? Super? So, in, in 1 John 3 and 20, and this also comes with growth and maturity in God. It says, for if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. The 
Amplified version say, whenever our heart convicts us, for God is God is greater than our hearts, and he knows all things. Nothing is hidden from him because we are in his hands. Mm-hmm. So, so, like, if we are feeling in our spirit and in our heart that what we've done or doing or look is wrong, that's the Holy Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and knowing that God is even greater than that. Mm-hmm. But but we are to do, and I'll find it soon. Is we should do a self evaluation, mm-hmm. right? Sometimes I would be like, I walked up to Jesus, and I happened to run into Jesus at the mall. When He checked me out, am I gonna check? I'm gonna pass all the the check marks, right? That's how I think. Or am I going to be like, like, um, what is that? Grabbing clothes and covering myself mm-hmm. and wanting to, oh, wait, wait, hold on. I'd be like the five virgin women that wasn't ready. Yes. The Bible referred to oil, but if he walk up to us and, and, and here we stand clothed in unholiness, uh, clothed in, in a way that ain't pleasing to God, is he going to look at me crazy? He ain't going to be ready. You know what I mean? That's how I think. To help myself stay in line. If Jesus is looking at me in the mirror, would he give me an approval? What you think, Brother Cooper? What you think? What you think about a man's cutting his hair in any way that's not pleasing unto the Lord. There's some ways that you could think of that you may have seen some hairstyles that make you look at it and think, do I want one of those? Did I get one of those? Have you seen any in your little lifetime? That that I would want? Yeah, that maybe it's not, maybe kind of iffy. Yes, sir. Oh, well, you have? Kind of. Do you have? Kind of. Well, no. what do you think when you, this hairstyle that you, you think you want? Do you, do, do you think I want it because I think it looks good, or did you pray about it, or have you ever considered that? I've thought about it for a long time. I've thought about it for the past three months. A long time. That's a long time. <laughs> and Neither. I've been, I've been thinking about it, and I've been, mm-hmm. you know, seeing. And then when Dad started talking about hair, I was kind of seeing, um, how would, how would he feel if I asked, could I get my, grow my hair out and get like swift? But did you pray and say what did? you pray about it and say what God would say? Or just dead? I prayed about it. I prayed about it and I prayed and prayed and prayed and I haven't gotten an answer. Maybe that is your answer. (laughs) And I was just, I haven't asked Dad yet. That was the mom in me, I'm sorry. (laughs) I'm just asking. I didn't know you was even Uh, considering something like that. Well, you grow my hair out and then to twist it down. Mercy. Not it's ex- not extremely long to where it's like past my ears and all that, but like maybe to like the middle of my ears. Mercy. Like just thick. Not long like Coach G's hair. I um, I've been debating with the Lord. Me, well, not debating with the Lord, but I've been dealing with um me and my hair, and I had to pray about it because I've been wanting locks for a little minute um and I wear a lot of different hairstyles a lot of different wigs and a lot of different things and something that God placed in my heart was that my hair is beautiful um regardless of of what I I do and so me and wanting to wear my hair more to appreciate what God has given me um he put in my heart to lock it up Mm. and so 
that is what I'm going to do so that I can show what God has given me and that he made me beautiful just with what I am and what I have. Um, and so that, that's something that, you know, I went back and forth with, well, I, I, but I don't, I don't like my natural hair, but that is what, you know, he put in my spirit. So like what my, what, what Sister First Lady Wynn said, um, I, I can you, just you really have to have that personal relationship and you have to have an open ear and make sure that you're in a place where you can definitely hear God when he's telling you yes or no go left or go right with things of this nature. Amen. Um, can I can I say something? Uh, this is the Tish. How y'all doing tonight? Hey, hello. All right, hello. Good. I'm good. I'm, I'm listening at, at all of these, um, the hair cutting, the hair dyeing, and um, twist locks. My opinion on this if it doesn't change who I am, mm. it doesn't change my walk with God. I mean, if I choose to maybe cut my hair, it has nothing to do with, with my Christ, Christ, Christianity. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not changing me, the person. Mm. I like that. You know, if I dye my hair blonde, okay, if I want to be a blonde, but I'm still walking with God, you know, I'm, 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 I'm still trying to do what's pleasing to God. It's not changing me, the person and what's in me. I, I think I'm saying this correctly. You are. I mean, <laughs> but, but sister Tish, you, 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 you right, but you're not right. And, and, and I, let and me know where I'm wrong, you no, know, because not, I'm not you. I'm not gonna use the role, the word wrong, because the well, fact, the fact well, that well, I'm is, not right. Let let me know where look, I'm not right. Because, look at look at the cause. Let me know where I'm not right, because, like I say, if, if I choose to cut my hair and it hasn't changed anything within me, you know what I'm saying? That that changed my walk with God and my belief in 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 those things. Okay, so I I didn't want to talk about the woman first. I didn't want to talk but about that. But you can't that. talk about the man's hair without yeah, talking about a but, woman's but hair. But you can. But okay, I will say this. Let me just say this. There's there's a cause and effect for everything that we do in the natural. It has an effect in the spirit, and that's mm -hmm. what I think. My my this is one of the key things I want us to grab from the lesson, from this, right, from this talk, from this study. What kind of effect of what I'm doing in the natural is it going to cause in the spirit realm? Because there's more going on in the spirit realm how the enemy used these things against us. Now, when I say that, Sister Tish, I'm simply mm -hmm. saying your words was I. If the Lord instructed you for whatever reason, then you are obedient. Then I would agree with you. It does not mm -hmm. change your Christian walk. Right. Right. The key, right. the key for me, the key would be the Lord the told Lord. me to mm -hmm. do this. It's okay. Mm -hmm. That's the key mm -hmm. for me. Right. Okay. If the Lord told okay. Pastor Cooper, Pastor Cooper, I need for you to start growing your hair out and plait your hair. Now, mm -hmm. now go back. Now, you know enough about Pastor Cooper that I am diligently trying to please the Lord with my life. That's number one. Mm -hmm. I'm yes. doing the very best that I can do. When the Lord say go right, I try to go right. When he say go yes. left, I try to go left. And that's yes. the key, to know mm -hmm. them. You know them. Now, if you said the Lord say, I'm not going to question that because right. I know you genuinely love the Lord. Amen. And you're not doing this out of no fad or because you see right. somebody else doing right. that. Right. I know that's not mm -hmm. your character. Right. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. for that, I mean, I, uh, and again, because I'm looking at the side of how and Impressionable we are to believers, the believers are to non-believers, and non-believers are to believers. Let the truth mm -hmm. be told. Right. right. And that's right. the difference. We just got to know. And we ain't about to bust out a suit, so let me stop. <laughs> what, you got? what you got, Cooper? What you got? For me, the takeaway, one of the most the thing that I've gotten, and we're just on the hair, mm -hmm. is the one scripture that says acknowledge God 
in all thy ways, and he shall direct that path. Absolutely. Uh, that, uh, what absolutely. Uh -huh. Well, can I be mm -hmm. honest? I ain't never asked God what I'm supposed to do with my hair. I have never prayed about what I'm supposed to do with my hair. But we, but. Should I mean, we? Or should we not? Should we? Oh, we are. I'm going to change my thoughts. Because he says in all, <laughs> he says I mean, all I feel like acknowledge right, the Lord, right. and he shall direct our yeah. path. Yeah, and I mean, I never did anything right. crazy, I, but I am going to pray about it now. <laughs> so does all. But I feel like, Miss Candy, with. With the life that you live yeah. and the spirit, the Holy Spirit that you have, have in you, I feel like if you were doing something that was not pleasing to God with your hair, He would let you know. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so not that you I weren't agree. doing mm -hmm. anything that you you were doing anything wrong with God asking me, and you should and, and going forth. Yes, we that is something. We, but if you weren't, right? I I, I feel like the Spirit in you, He would let you know. Mm. You go, girl. Mm. <laughs> now mm. I. I want to piggyback on Terrell and Jacob. Before I made a, a conscious decision to do, do my micro locks, I have prayed and thought and read and studied and lowered this for over a year now. Wow. That oh. I, it initially was, ooh, that's pretty. Ooh, I like that. Lord, is that okay? Lord, what am I going to look like? What impression am I going to give to people? Is it befitting for my job? Is it befitting for my lifestyle? I've prayed about that for over a year. Wow. When I first, and so before I made the, and it is truly an investment, I wanted to make sure that it was going to be right mm -hmm. and that I wasn't just doing something for Gwen because I don't want to, one, stumble myself, or even cause someone to stumble by just a hairstyle. Right. Yeah. So I, I did. And so I felt like the more I prayed about it, God was leading me that it was okay. And not even that, he kept putting this stylist in my face on my timeline, doing this hairstyle and seeing her, her work get better and better over the years. So I really felt that I saw something that was interesting. I prayed about it. I sought God, and he just kind of mm -hmm. led me. Right, that it was okay. That it was okay. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you, Brother Walter, I'm going to ask you, what do you think about your hair? Do you pray about should you cut your hair? Absolutely not. So I, I think didn't even think about. I didn't even think about it either to the point where the Lord say do this. Right. Absolutely not. So I we not. definitely need to seek God in all that we do. Um, Absolutely. And I think it because I've never dressed – flamboyant, any of that. I, I mean, I thought, well, I've never s seek God. Am I supposed to wear this? You know what I mean? Because I've just have never been that kind of person. Um, actually, quite the opposite. I'm more tomboyish. But, um, you know, I just, this is definitely a good way to realize we do want to be more holy. Is that even good grammar? We want to be more holy. Mm -hmm. And yeah. um, if it's from head to toe, then we need to start there. Father God, I need, you know, wisdom on how I'm supposed to do with my hair every part of me, whatever I'm supposed to be doing. We we do know that in the Bible it does say about taking care of our body. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think... I think awareness is everything. If we if this pray. discussion, these Bible studies does nothing but bring awareness mm -hmm. of what we should be doing right. and how we should be seeking God's approval Yes. Yeah. for everything. Yes. Because right. we want to get to heaven. Yes. <laughs> because Absolutely. we don't want to get there and say right. X, Y, or Z. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right. So I think it's just when you know better, Terrell, you do better. Mm -hmm. And what's your saying, Dad? You say with your information. What's the saying, Terrell? When you got all the information, you make a better decision. Mm -hmm. When you have all the facts. Mm -hmm. So here is an, another fact of in this layers, it's like an onion. As we study the word of God and learn of God's word mm -hmm. and his ways, it's like layers that, okay, so you got that worldly layer off you not doing this. Now here's another layer. Yes. Mm -hmm. And yeah. and I think as we walk, mm -hmm. it's layers that gets us. As we peel back these layers of this flesh, you get closer and closer it's to more God. More holy. And you, it's a learning. It's mm -hmm. it's. It's a school you never should graduate from. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? And it's, 
And as we read his word, we are learning his will for our lives because the Bible is the pathway, the blueprint for our lives. Absolutely. Amen. 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 Now, you know, I'd be the first one to say, I I don't have a right, nor would I even, that's not my personality. I'm not going to sit there and stand in your face and tell you how wrong you are. I'm not going to say you fin. I'll tell my wife, maybe tell Jacob, but I'm not going to tell y'all, no one else. And Terrell. I may do it to Terrell, too. Yeah, I'll do it to Terrell. Bella, too. But <laughs> outside of that, I'm not going to say what you're doing is wrong, right, and that you're going to burn. I, that's not me because I'm, I'm not your judge. Right. I'm trying to make right. it the way you're trying to make it. Right. But for the right. fact of God is wanting us to really look at this, it must mean something right? Yeah. to look at this. Amen. 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 Like, um. Amen. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop. So, like, before we started this discussion a couple of weeks ago, ain't gonna stop you. I had brought me some hair dye, y'all. I had me some hair dye. And I was finna, we ain't on know, that yet. Don't, don't get on that. We're going to talk I'm, about that. This is my we're testimony. We're going to talk about that. Can I? I can't share my testimony? Yeah, we're going to talk about hair week. dye. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> but but I, I was like, I was praying. Right? My mama, she's delivered from her highlighter. Right? She likes her highlighter. I'm not there. I was praying. And I I was like, Lord, I got this dye. I done brought it. We talking about hair. We talking about holiness. I know others' opinion. But God, I'm struggling with this. Mm. And I that it sat there a couple of weeks, y'all. And and I felt in my spirit, it's okay. You are I was grieved. Cause I'm, I don't like of how I feel with gray hair, and so I was very, I was struggling, and then it was like it's okay, but I acknowledged it. I took a moment. I didn't just jump the gun. I acknowledged before I have just said I don't like it. I, don't, you know, but I acknowledge, and I think at the end of the day, that's my takeaway is just acknowledge it. I'll let you know if it's right or wrong. Well, let's get, if we're going to talk about men and gray, let's get to that point is, does it, in my opinion, a man with gray hair, it, to me it doesn't show aging, it shows wisdom. It shows the, what they've been through their life. I mean, like Brother Walter, I look at a, like if he's got a couple of grays or whatever. It's a couple. me. Well, it's me that he's, it's wisdom. You know, he's been through stuff to get to where he's at. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, so that, and, it, and God made him starting to get gray hair. It ain't like, you know, if God didn't want him to get gray, he wouldn't get gray. So don't be looking at your wife like that. <laughs> I, I just like it. But I just, uh, it's for a man, to, you know, and I know I'm not, I'm not a man, so I don't know how it feels, but I'm sure there are men. My dad, when he started getting gray, it drove him crazy. He wanted to start dying, and I'm like, look, dude, really, no, don't do it, don't. And, you know, it become to a fact where he got accustomed to the fact that it's okay. You know, and gray is okay. I mean, I I don't know how men feel. I know women are more, let's just get real, we are more superficial. Is that the word I'm looking for? Where we do care what people think. Aware. Aware. Well, yeah, that's the word you want to call it. But men are not, most of them aren't like that. Sensitive. Yeah, so men, I think for you, like I said, to die, to get rid of gray hair for you, to me would be um, not something that I think would be the right thing for you. I know some men that died of hair. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I know some men that died of hair. Sure. I, I, but I, henna is natural. It's a natural substance, henna. So let's finish for tonight. <laughs> I'm not going to even get into the gray. I'm just listening to y'all testimonies, and we'll talk about the gray and the dye at another time. Amen. But can you repeat what you said? You said, what kind of effect that I am doing in the natural what was the rest of that? Yeah, the, the for the spirit, my, the, the effects, the cause and effect. By me, by me making a decision to change or alter my hair in any way, right? Like, with, like I said, like with a sign or a symbol or words. I'm just talking about not going to the barber and 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 getting a haircut. Because I mean, I, again, I didn't ask the Lord about cutting my hair the way I cut it. I've always just cut it this way. My dad wore his hair all the way low, and I just wear mine low. Mm-hmm. But for the fact of I know that how the enemy take what God has given us, and he wants to degrade it in a way that it causes.
cause not only shame, but shame upon us mm. when we stand it before the Father. So I know mm. that the natural realm here on earth with what I do, there's an effect in the spirit realm, right? There's an effect that gives the, gives Satan legal access or an open door, right, that he can kind of have his way with me with certain things. Mm. I, I know that, and it is true. It is that's true. That's what. That's what. Because if you, I mean, and so go and, again. Go go to Samson. Of that, go, go to Samson. Go again. Right. And because we know that what we do and how, what we, some of the things we do are dress or look represents other things and, mm -hmm. and can allow, then we should pray about these things in all things. When we pray about them prior, not after doing it, but prior to doing it, we should pray and get the direction of God. Well, that's the first instruction the Lord has given us. But it still don't change the fact of what things represent. No, because and I think if you I should. Take, if, I take, if, I take, if I take, just like they had the, the, the image, the calf in the temple, remember the, uh, the, the Dagon, I think I'm pronouncing that right, remember? The God that they would worship. Y'all remember the story? Mm -hmm. How, and it was actually in the temple. When they took the Ark of the Covenant in the temple, they walked in one, one morning, and he was knocked over, right? They picked him back up, placed him back on whatever little pedestal they had, the, the God that they worshiped on. Went back in the next time. The next day, he was knocked over, but he was broken this time, right? Oh, yeah, it's in there. Try to Google that right quick. But what is it? It's. I'm just I'm talking about images. I'm talking about objects. That's what I'm talking about when I say about uh, dealing in the spirit realm, right? With the things that we do, because there is a cause and effect. There's an attachment. Thank you for that word, Lord. There's an attachment, right? There's an attachment that it it actually because again, if we think about it, where the, is there anything new up under the sun? No, that's no. what the word of God says. There's nothing new up under the sun. So where did these things come from? Where, where, did, where did the idea come from? Right? It had to come from somewhere. Did it come from God? Or did it come from Satan? Mm -hmm. It had to come from somewhere. And with two places it can come from. Right? But awareness makes us do that. Absolutely. Being aware. Absolutely. Of. Absolutely. That's why we're having this difficult, beautiful discussion. Right? Awareness. Mm -hmm. Right? It's going to, and, and, and our homework was to go and seek the Lord and see what the Lord had to say about where we were going. Did anybody get an answer from the Lord in the two weeks? I know last week we didn't have Bible study last week, but did we get an answer from the Lord? I'd rather Pastor Cooper done lost his marbles. Right? He's, he's, in, he's in his flesh. What pastor, think about it this way, just for my great. Y'all just for my great. What pastor in their right mind would get before God's people and bring up a subject that they already know is sensitive Not if very God many. didn't tell them to do that? Not very many. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Just Not give me a little grace. Not very many. Just, now, listen, David. You mean to tell me you're going to go out before this giant, this Philistine mm -hmm. giant, and you are only a boy? Yeah. Huh? And you're going to go mm -hmm. with a slingshot? That's going to be your weapon? <laughs> right. You know, they looked at him like, you lost Come on your mind. now. Come <laughs> right. on. Come on. You found it, Coop? Come on. We don't, I don't want to go before we, uh, and I'm going to just read the last, one of the last things that possibly could happen from when we shave our heads. So find that. I'm, I know I paraphrased that. Come on, Zoom family. See, can you Google that? Where the, you found it? I know it's in the Old Testament. I can tell you that. I don't know if it's in Leviticus, Exodus. I don't know. What was it? It's what was it that I again? Think it's First Samuel five and two. First Samuel five and two. First Samuel five and two. We're just looking at the images. We're just looking at how things. 
how things happen. You know, the connection, the tie, the roadmap, or the the fuel. You found it? First Samuel five and two. What you got, Coop? That's it? Uh-huh. Okay, what you got? First Samuel 5, starting verse 1. Uh-huh. And it says, And the Philistines took the ark of God and brought it from Ebuchadnezzar unto Ashdod. Mm-hmm. When the Philistines took the ark of God, they mm-hmm. brought it into the house of Dagon. Mm-hmm. Dagon. G-O-N. Mm-hmm. And set it by Dagon. And when they of Ashdod arose early on the morrow, Mm-hmm. Behold, Dagon was fallen upon his face to the earth before the ark of the of the Lord. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And they took Dagon set and him. set him in his place mm-hmm. again. And when they arose early on the morrow mm-hmm. morning, behold, Dagon was fallen upon his face mm-hmm. to the ground before the ark of the Lord. What happened? And the head of Dagon. And? And both the palms of his hands were cut off mm-hmm. upon mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. threshold. Mm-hmm. Only the stump of Dagon mm-hmm. was left to him. Mm-hmm. Therefore, neither the priest of Dagon mm-hmm. nor any of that come into that Dagon's house tread on treaded on the household of Dagon in Ashdod until this day. But the hand of the Lord was heavy upon them of Ashdod, and he destroyed them and smote them mm-hmm. with emeralds, even Ashdod, and the coast thereof. Mm-hmm. That, was just a, that was just an object that they used for idol, for idol, for worship and idols, for worship and Satan. Let's just be real about it. Right? So basically, when you, when you, that w- when you allow God in your house, he's going to then destroy any idol or false little G-gods or things in our lives, in our house. Without he us asking? Destroy. Without us asking? They didn't ask him right here. Yeah, but this was in, this was in the temple. I understand. Right? But when this was, remember, so remember when the Lord told Moses even about building the Ark of the Covenant? And what he w- how he was supposed to build it, the shape, what he was supposed to place on top, mm-hmm. right? Remember the mercy seat? Mm-hmm. Right. Remember the two cherubims on the side? Mm-hmm. Right. Remember he said that he would come sit on the mercy seat, mm-hmm. right? So that object was a obje- an object of his presence, mm-hmm. right? The right. Lord's presence. So I understand what you're saying about that, but his will, God's will, God ain't going to never supersede our will. If we are enjoying things then it's going to be hard pressed for us to really say no to those things mm-hmm. but go ahead but when when I got saved and I don't to talk about me and I asked Christ into my life mm-hmm. when the representation of Christ now is the Holy Spirit it's no longer the Ark of the Covenant this is how I'm thinking. So I allowed this into my life, just like they put this ark into the temple. God began to slowly knock down, destroy things in my life. And if I picked them up, he, because I was wanting more and out of lack of knowledge and lack of know-how, I watched him destroy things like Dagon in my personal life. So that he can live and take a residence. So to me, that's just my interpretation. I understand what you're saying. But to me, he'll knock down what I need to have red hair, a black hair, a gray hair, a green hair. And if I pick it up, he going to knock it down. Because my desire is to want more of him. Mm-hmm. That's how I just saw that. That's my little G. Gwen interpretation of Samuel. All right, so let's close, all right? Yep. And the last possibility, right, would be for repentance when, when someone shaved their head, and we saw it in Job, right? Job was 
praying to the Lord and just or outside of mourning because he was mourning. Because they had just lost his temple. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Jeremiah, well, I'm sorry, not Job. I'm sorry. Jeremiah 7 and 29. I'm sorry. I said that wrong. Jeremiah 7 and 29. That's the last verse. I'm going to read that, but we're not going to discuss that. You can go home and read that tonight and let the Holy Spirit. Uh, 729 is what I got. 720. And Osir here, O Jerusalem, and cast your voice. Go ahead and read it, Minister Sheffield. Cut off thy hair, O Jerusalem, and mm-hmm. cast it away, and take up a lamentation on mm-hmm. high places. For the Lord has rejected and forsaken the generation of his wrath. Talking about repentance, right? Mm-hmm. Right? Talking yeah. about repentance. Any instructions? Verse, um, verse 28 says, but thou shalt say unto them, this is a nation that obeyeth not the voice of the Lord, their God, nor receiveth correction. Truth is perished, and it is cut off from their mouth. Mm-hmm. Again, we started, the Holy Spirit started talking to us about what is truth, right? Truth about his word. So we're going to stop there tonight. I had a couple of more, but we didn't get to them. But God was so graciously that he shared some others with us. Ezekiel 44 and 20. Make sure you got that one in your notes. Uh, Matthew 5 and 30 was one, too, that we read, too, wasn't it? So we're just thinking about the fact of, number one, if we don't take anything from the lesson, let's acknowledge the Lord in all that we do. Right? Let's do that first. And the outcome, whatever the Lord says, then that's what What you you do. do. Amen. Amen. Sister Tish. Eyes here. All right. (laughs) (laughs) All right. All right. I, I I got my right and my my right and my left my right and my wrong I got it. <laughs> Amen, Wolf. Amen. 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 Thank y'all so much. Let's pray out, and we can fellowship and love on one another. I mean, there's a lot more. There's a ton of scriptures that I mean. You know, I really don't know. I know we just kind of grabbing one or two of them and then having a deep discussion about them. But there's a ton of scriptures in there about hair. Trust me when I tell you, it's a ton of them in there, both ways, long and short. Right? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's mm-hmm. just, like I say, that's, this is a good way to open it up for the Holy Spirit to really say now, well, I maybe wasn't doing that before. Now I really got to take a good look at it and see what the Lord say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. See what the Lord say. That's what has changed for me. Yeah, <laughs> see what the Lord say. And then yeah. he'll direct our path. Amen? Amen. So we Amen. probably not, I'm, I know I'm not going to try to cover them all because we we probably wouldn't get off a of hair for another two or three years. I Googled and it said it was 78 Bible verses about men cutting their hair. 78? 78. 78. Oh 78. Wow. So I, you can see Pastor Cooper ain't making it up. Ain't that something? <laughs> wow. Ain't that something? 78. I would have not thought that. Yeah. Wow. It's important. I mean, it's just important for the fact of, you know, for me, I, I've been looking at my life to the point of being free. You know, there's there's times, you know, when 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 God told uh, Paul about His grace is sufficient unto him, right? And he was asking for that thorn in his side to be removed, and God said, "No, my grace is sufficient. That's going to stay with you." So you always be reminded, right? And there's some things in my life I prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed a long time, y'all. When I tell y'all, years, years in my life asking God for deliverance. They didn't come until years later. A lot of years later. You hear me? There's a cause and there's an effect of what we do. Amen? Let us pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for your sweet spirit, God. Thank you for leading us and and guiding us in truth and righteousness. Thank you for the love that you have for us, God, that you would allow us to study your word in depth to really take a good look at what it really means to acknowledge you in all that we do, Father, to ensure, God, that when the time comes, we have nothing missing on our paper, that we have gotten all the answers correctly, God, that we can hear you say, well done, my faithful servant. 
That's our ultimate goal, God, is to please you in all that we do. So we thank you for leading us and guiding us and keeping us. As we sleep tonight, sweet sleep, we pray that your heaven will be open, God, that you will reveal the hidden mysteries of your word unto us, God. Bring about yes. even more truth. Continue to look on the sick and the shut in tonight. Yes. Bless those that are on the dangerous highways, God. Keep them covered. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. 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 amen.